G'day, Starlo here. You know, at the first suggestion of spring every year, my thoughts automatically turn to the coming bass season in the rivers and streams. And I always start too early. <laughs> Our season opens here in New South Wales on the 1st of September, and I'm usually out there on the 1st of September but it's often like it is today. And as you can probably tell from the way I'm dressed, it's pretty damn cold. The air temperature is about 14 degrees. I reckon the water is probably 11 or 12. It doesn't feel bassy at all, but I've just got to get out there and have a crack and see if the fish have started coming up the river early. Early in the season like this, I always tend to concentrate around the upper tidal limits where there's just a little bit of tidal movement. This water is perfectly good to drink. It's fresh, especially on the surface. There might be a little bit of saltier stuff down deeper, but um, we're just at the very, very top of the tidal influence here. And that's a good place to start looking for bass and estuary perch early in the season. Later on in the year, especially if there's a bit of rain and a few rises in river level, they'll move well upstream. They'll go as far upstream the bass as the first impassable barrier. But at the moment, this is where I'm hoping to find them. Some of the fish that have been down in the estuary spawning, hopefully, and now they're moving back up. Let's see if we can find a few early season bass. I'm on one of my local river systems on the far south coast of New South Wales, but there are bass rivers like this one all the way from Victoria to southern Queensland. All right, well, this is it. I'm about to make the first cast of a brand new bass season. I've got six or seven exciting months ahead of me. The fishery will change throughout that period. I've got to tell you, right at the moment, I don't have a lot of confidence that I'm going to find fish. It's, it's very cold. We just haven't had the right sort of weather. We haven't had a bit of a fresh to bring them up here, but who knows? You've got to give it a go. You've got to be in it to win it. Here we go. There's always a huge amount of anticipation about that first cast. Could this be one of those magical seasons that kicks off with a bang? Well, there we go. I didn't catch a bass on my first cast of the new season. I wonder how many thousands of casts I'll make across the coming six or seven months. These have become very much my go-to lure on bass in the rivers, especially early in the season like this. It's what's known as a bladed jig, also called a mumbler. You'll hear them referred to a lot as chatterbaits, but chatterbait is actually the registered name of one particular brand. This one's a Hell Yeah, which is an Australian-made bladed jig. It comes with the skirt and this nice little blade on the front that gives it a great action. And I usually fit a soft plastic trailer of some sort. This one's a a squidgy Durastretch prawn. Just something that'll just hang out the back of the, the skirt and give it a little bit more action, a little bit more bulk. And um, the thing I really like about these is you can fish them in so many different ways. You can let them sink straight down the front of a deep snag or a drop off, or you can keep them up high in the water. You can burn them fairly fast. You can go slow and they give you lots of feedback through the rod. You can really feel when they're swimming. Gee, they really seem to push the buttons of the bass, particularly early in the season like this. And at this time of year, I like to fish them fairly deep and reasonably slow. I think you've got to get the lure down there in front of the fish a lot of the time when the water's this cold. And uh, you don't want to go too quick. Later on in the year, it's almost impossible to go too fast for bass sometimes. But early in the season like this, I like to give them a fairly good look at the lure. Although the water is very clear here today, as well as being cold, it is clear. So I don't want to go too slow and give them too good a look at the lure. There's no sign of life. There's no mullet. In a couple of weeks' time, certainly in another month's time, there'll be mullet jumping and boiling up here. But at the moment, it just feels fairly dead. But that's not to say there won't be the odd fish up here. You're not going to find out sitting at home. This early season bass and estuary perch fishing in my part of the world can be very hit and miss. And it's heavily dictated by the weather and river conditions. But I don't really mind. The other thing about getting out early like this is you can check out how much the, the river's changed. We've had a few floods through the winter. Snags have moved around. Some holes have been scoured out deeper, other ones will have filled in, the sandbars have changed. It's good just to get a bit of a feel for what the river's going to be like for the coming season. But so far, it's living up to my fairly low expectations. Nothing's happening. 
I know I just need to keep putting in the casts if I'm ever going to find a willing fish. They often don't come easy, especially at this time of year. I'm working a deeper snag lined bank that's produced for me in the past. Surely there's got to be one fish here if I keep presenting my lure as close as possible to the structure. Got my first snag of the season. That won't be the last either. Unless you're getting close to the cover, you're not going to catch the fish and that means you're going to get the occasional snag. Good thing about being in a kayak is you can just pedal in there quietly and get your lure back. Well, as I expected, I drew a complete blank. I didn't even have a bump. I think I'm just a couple of weeks too early. I'll wait for a little bit of warmer weather, hopefully maybe a drop of rain to just raise the river slightly and help them get up here. But at the moment, it's really dead up here. One of the things I like to look for is the presence of the mullet. I reckon when the mullet move up here, the bass and the estuary perch tend to move about the same time. Anyway, I had to come and have a look. <laughs> So a couple of weeks have passed since my first fruitless shot at the bass for the new season and to be honest with you the weather still hasn't warmed up a lot. Today's the best day we've had in quite a while. It got up to about 18 maybe 19 degrees in the middle of the day and it's already dropping towards evening. The water still feels really cold. I'm still not seeing anything in the way of mullet or any other life. It's uh, It's been a slow start to spring but Anyway, I've got to get out and give them another shot. I'm going to fish the same stretch of water that I fished last time and just see if those couple of weeks have made a difference. We have had a little bit of rain. We had one drop of about uh, 40 or 50 mil actually a few days ago and surprisingly it hasn't discoloured the river. It may have raised it slightly. Maybe it's enough to bring a few fish up. I hope so. Anyway, the only way we're going to find out is to get a lure in the water. All right. I'm going to kick off by having a couple of quick casts at the first snag that I fished on that earlier trip. And if we don't do any good here, I might push down river a bit further and then work my way back up. I think I just heard a mullet. I just heard a splash anyway. Hopefully, there might be some life. I let the bladed jig with its soft plastic trailer touch bottom briefly before commencing a medium paced retrieve, punctuated by the odd pause. still really clear despite that bit of rain we had. It's not as clear as it was a couple of weeks ago, but it's still clear. I've been joined by my wife Jo on this trip. She's um, back behind me. She was uh, just rigging up her rod before coming down, so I'm sure she'll catch up in a minute. Not only did Joe catch up, she soon passed me and I had to pedal fairly hard to keep up. Like me, she decided that we might do better further downstream towards the salt, and we didn't have a lot of time to waste. As with most river systems, this one alternates between shallower runs and deeper holes. Shallows up pretty quickly, I think. The bass tend to seek the sanctuary of a little depth, at least during the day. And of course, they love structure. You need to get your lure close to the bank. I'll go as far as this snag down here and then start coming back. With the light fading fast, we now began fishing our way back upstream towards our parked vehicle. Some days they just won't come away from the cover at all to take the lure. You've got to get it right on their nose. And that's what happens when you do, you get snagged. But if you're not getting snagged, you're not going to catch very many fish. It's just par for the course. I'll just paddle in and hopefully poke it off with the rod tip. And I'll tell you what, it has a bit of depth in the middle of that snag. I bet there's a fish sitting in there somewhere. A bit of current through it. That'd be a prime spot. All right, while well, I'm in here, try a little short one. Ah. 
probably sitting too close to them. Good chance the fish will already be aware of my presence. All right, we'll keep heading up. I was still sticking doggedly to that hell yeah bladed jig. I've caught far too many bass and perch on them in the past to start swapping and changing now. But it was starting to look like I was headed for another donut. So I stupidly turned the cameras off and you can probably guess exactly what happened next. I hooked a powerful fish that instantly had me in some serious trouble amongst the submerged branches of a fallen tree. I was huffing and puffing and hauling and hoping, dragging myself deeper and deeper into the snag pile. I don't think he's still there. Yes, he is. Yes, he is still on. Oh, oh boy. First bass of the season. Oh, and he's full of fight. Oh, oh, he's buried me once in the timber. Yes! First bass of the season. I was starting to think we weren't going to get one. Oh, I didn't have the cameras rolling because I was saving batteries, but I cast in on that snag. I barely got the reel into gear and I was just losing line. I went straight through one lot of timber. I got it off and it got into another log. Oh, I'm shaking. I'll <laughs> back out of here and have a look at him. He's so fat. Oh, oh he's a cracking fish. Wow, I thought I'd lost him. I thought he was gone when he was in that timber, but he was still on. Look at that. You know, if I'd lost that fish, I would have thought it was heaps bigger than that even. That's just probably a, I don't know, about a 44, 45 centimetre type bass to the, the tips. I would have sworn that it was a 50 the way it went. Often early in the season like this, when the water's still a bit cold, they don't go quite as hard as they do later in the year. But whoa, that one went really hard. He is so fat. Got to wonder whether it actually spawned or not. Oh, it's so good to open my account for a new season. <laughs> the plastic's gone off the back of the hill, yeah. My glasses are fogging up. <sighs> oh, might get you to take some photos, love. Oh my God, I'll come over. That was just torrid. There you go. I thought he was so much bigger than that. I just had no control over that fish. It was just charging from one snag to another, just wrapping me around one bit of timber after another. They are just dynamite. It's always great to have a companion along to shoot a couple of quick happy snaps when you finally break your duck. There won't be another one on the same snag, but it's a good sign that there might be a few here. Early season bass. So fat. Get him back in the water. Oh, he's ready to go. See you, mate. <laughs> oh, yes. That makes it all worthwhile. Mm, it's that good time of day now. Probably only an hour or a slight left at the most. A little bit of cloud cover's come in. Wind's dropped off. It um, feels halfway good, although it always feels good after you've caught a fish. <laughs> it's still early in the season, but it is starting to happen. Rapidly running out of light now. I'm going to switch to surface lure pretty soon, but um, I doubt that I'll have enough light or enough battery left to keep filming it. See how we go. 
Sure enough, the light faded fast and just as surely, as soon as it was too dark to film properly, the fish started to chew. Talk about Murphy's Law. Got one. Oh. <laughs> oh, what do we got? Little bass. Oh, not much light left. Yeah, he's a little bass. Little chunky chap. All right, time to switch to the surface. And I reckon that's about the end of filming. Whoa, <laughs> oh, got spiked. <laughs> got my first and second bass of the season and my first spiking. Ouch, that hurts. <laughs> oh, hello. As tough as the early season can be, I just love chasing wild bass and estuary perch in our rivers. It's as much about the places it takes you to and the things that you see as the fish themselves. But those fish are also pretty special. Until next time, this is Starlo wishing you tight lines. <laughs>